So there's a quick video about the pens and pencils that I've been writing with in March, 2023. Uh, in this series of videos, I mainly discuss the pens and pencils I've been using. It's not a set of reviews or recommendations. It's just what's been on my desk this month. So we'll jump right into it. It's kind of an oddball selection of stuff I've been curious about, stuff I use all the time, and then uh, some things that have already been featured on the channel. First up, we have this one. Uh, this is called the, there you go, Stabilo uh, Palette. And uh, basically it is a gel pen. I believe it's a gel pen uh, that uses some characteristics that are, uh, you know, something you would commonly find in Stabilo's pens, like this curved body. It is retractable, which I wouldn't normally associate with Stabilo, but they do have some retractable pens. Got a nice grip area, and it's a really cool writer. I really have a soft spot for these Stabilo pens. They're German, not super common in the U.S., but they tend to be made very well. They tend to uh, write very nicely, and they're just like a little bit nicer than they have to be. Some of them are a lot nicer than they have to be, but they have a very distinct feel to them. I feel like this company is a company with an outlook that when they make a pen or marker or even a crayon, they kind of know what they're going for. And uh, they are pretty distinctive. I had never used this one before and I've been enjoying it. it. Has some cool little features like a larger than normal button, which is nice and comfortable. A curved section here, so it's comfortable to hold. This very short or very blunt front section. This area here is very grippy, so it picks up a bunch of garbage and it always looks dirty, but it's very comfortable to hold. See that little logo there? And then uh, this right here is hard to tell what it is. It was this pen is relatively new, but it's actually an ink window. So here's that gel refill. And you can see here, it's actually that, that area is clear. So if you were to have less than, uh, you know, maybe a less than a quarter of your ink left, this would start to be, start to see through there. So pretty cool. Do writing samples at the end, but uh, this is the Stabilo palette and it's pretty easy to find it is in the they call it a 0.4 millimeter but that's because some companies measure the writing differently this would be like uh 0.4 millimeter is like the size of the the ball as opposed to the size of the line uh it's a little confusing but it writes like a 0.7 millimeter in a more conf uh, more conventional measurement next up we have this this is a very old school roller ball. It's called the Uniball Deluxe Fine. The, like the name is the Deluxe, it's in the fine width. And this is like a Uniball, this is like a Uniball uh, capped roller ball designed from the 90s, maybe the 80s, hard to say. But I feel like if you looked at roller balls like 20 years ago, this would be a fairly common design before like the vision and other things like that started coming out. And uh, this is just kind of what they look like. It's kind of boring, has this kind of gold platinum color. And I've uh, been using this. It's okay, you know, like it's it's fine. It's not really remarkable. It's why I've been using this for a few weeks now, probably a few months actually. And <laughs> I don't have too much to say about them. They're just like, yeah, it's a pen. It writes, it has super ink. Uh, that's what they call it. I don't think the ink is actually super, uh, but it's totally fine. And it's a nice throwback. But you know, it's not it's not super comfortable. There's not really any grippy areas. There's not much of a uh, thought behind like uh, a human hand is going to be using this. It's just like straight barrel. Like the cap doesn't come off that well. The click on is not great. You know, it's a fine it's a fine pen. But it kind of reminds me of kind of all the progress that's been made over the years. And uh, it's a good writer if you want an old school rollerball. But if you kind of remove the historic or nostalgic aspects to it, I think we could agree that like things have moved past the uh, the deluxe, and uh, there there are better rollerballs sold today. And even more than that, the uh, industry has moved largely to the gel pens, which I think are largely an improvement over the uh, old school rollerballs. This is a pen I've talked about a few times before, so I won't dwell on it. This is the uh, Bolograph Epaca. 
This is the uh, Paca P, I guess it's technically called. This is the luxury version, which means it has a standard section here, but a metal top area. And I've actually put a Schmidt Easy Flow 9000 B in here. Not many of these left. And my last few ones are, are kind of dying. Uh, so they don't have a very long shelf life, but I like the Easy Flow 9000. I think opinions have changed on the Easy Flow 9000 a lot. I think a lot of people really like them. And over the past couple of years, people have gotten a little bit fed up with their inconsistency and their lack of reliability. I still have a soft spot for them. And uh, if you flip this top or cut it down, depending on how you want to do it, with a normal Bolograph refill, you can get that refill in here. And it's just a really, I think this is like one of the best looking pens ever made. Like just like flat out, great, great looking pen. Quite comfortable, has a fun click to it, which I didn't ruin when I changed the refill. And uh, again, I, I really do like the Bolograph, sorry, the, uh, the Easy Flows when they're writing. So we'll do a writing sample in a minute and we'll see how this one's going lately, maybe, uh, I think it's on the way out, but it is a very enjoyable writer. Uh, this is a Schneider Slider Memo XB. So Schneider makes a bunch of, uh, again, another German company, has this nice curved body to it, it's rubberized here, hard plastic here, and Schneider makes a bunch of very nice traditional ballpoint refills. The XB is their extra broad, extra bold, whatever. And uh, it's a really, you could see, it's a quite thick ballpoint refill. It's a great writer. This is similar to the Schneider, I believe it's a 755 XB refill, which is their Parker style refill. And this is just the, uh, that refill, or that ink, I guess, technically with that wide tip put in a capped or stick style pen. It's quite comfortable, pretty easy to find. And I had used many pens like this, but I had never specifically used the slider memo. And if you like a very broad, very smooth ballpoint, then you're good to go. This one is uses, it's called the Visco Glide ink. So if you look up Visco Glide, you'll see a bunch of uh, those. It's like modern style ballpoint ink. So uh, quite nice. I don't think like you have to look for the slido me slider memo specifically, anything in there. Uh, XB, so like a 755 XB or whatever, will be that sort of pen. I think it's a cool looking pen. Again, not one that's very common in the US and quite comfortable to hold and it lasts a very long time. This one is not refillable. I think it's fixed at both ends. I haven't been able to get it open. I haven't honestly tried that hard. Uh, it's quite reliable, but again, not refillable. It's a little bit disappointing, but you can refill some of these slider pens if you shop around. I did a full video on this one, so I won't talk about it so much. This is the Pentel Arends AT, and this is the dual grip Pentel Arends. I think uh, basically the summary of my video review was that I really like the Arends series if you want an automatic pencil. So uh, it's like when the lead kind of goes out on its own, then I think the Pentel Arends Nero is the way to go, pretty much full stop. Pentel, when they released a newer rents called this, the uh, AT. I was curious, so I bought one, and it's not as good as the Arends Nero. It's not made as well. I don't like the grip as much, even though the grip looks cool. Uh, Pentel has other dual grip pens, like the Graph Gear 1000, which is one of their most famous pens, maybe pencils. I keep saying pens. It's one of their most famous pencils, and definitely the most famous dual grip pencil. Uh, so this sort of echoes that, which I would say from a, like a creation move makes a lot of sense. Pentel is like, they're doing smart stuff. I just don't think, think the execution is that great. It's not as good looking as the Arends Nero and the internals have been downgraded. There's a lot more plastic parts and it just doesn't feel as good in your hand. So interesting release, but stick with the Arends Nero if you're looking for a great 20 to 25 dollar maybe like 25 26 dollar mechanical pencil the at is you know pretty cool but not my pick on the channel i've talked many many times about my love for very broad gel pens and the uh, pilot 
V10 is uh, one of my favorites. Usually I use a high tech point V10. Uh, the, I believe the high tech point is only sold in Japan or maybe just Japan and Europe. And the precise is the US model. It's hard to distinguish exactly that, but this is the Pilot Precise V10. So it's a 1.0 millimeter refill RT, which means it's retractable. Uh, this is also a sub variant of the Pilot Precise in that it is the grip model. Not all of them have a grip. So uh, you have your high tech points, which are refillable with a uh, with a cartridge. This is a rollerball. This is a gel refill. So it's not quite a high tech point, but you do have your V10. So one that millimeter grip RT. So retractable and needle point. So it's like if you really, really want to split hairs with the different types of gel pens, then uh, this one really checks a lot of boxes for me. Uh, I, I like the pen a lot. I love the V10s. I love the Precise series, so on and so forth. This one has a skinny button that like kind of hurts a little bit every time you press it, uh, but it makes up for it with a really nice clip. And of course, the grip It's a very broad, very wet writer and uh, a lot of fun to use. This one, uh, clearly I'm kind of on kind of an old school kick here. This is a Pentel Rolling Writer, and this is sort of like a very old school sort of marker style rollerball. I'm not even sure what you would call it with this, uh, with this old school tip on it. There is, a, it does have a ball. It writes like a marker kind of, because it's this plastic on plastic tip here. See how close we can get to that. And uh, sort of writes like a marker, which it's soft like a marker, but it has the mechanics of a ball point, a roller ball, whatever you want to call it. And I believe on the inside is a big wick, sort of like a roller ball or kind of like a marker too. So it writes like a sign pen, uh, like a, a, you know, one of the famous Japanese sign pens, but the, uh, it's a little bit different, I guess. I don't know. It's basically a sign pen. It's called the Rolling Writer. It's fun to use. Has a very old school feel to it and uh, has a sort of wet writing. This one, I won't say for the end. It writes like a sign pen where it's just something you're, you know, for note taking and and sort of like marker type use. Uh, and it's it's kind of its own thing. It's not quite a ballpoint. It's not, definitely not a ballpoint. It's not quite a roller ball. It's not quite a gel pen. It's not quite a marker. It's somewhere between them. And it doesn't have a felt tip the way a uh, Sharpie does. So it's definitely a distinct thing. So that's the Rolling Rider. And you get a 12 pack of these for uh, under 10 bucks. So that it's a very interesting pickup. Lastly, and this is probably the pen everyone saw immediately and they kind of like, oh, what's that? This is a Sakura Craft Lab, which is like the high-end, uh, I don't know if they're a limited edition, but high-end part of uh, Sakura pens. And this is the model 001. So it's, uh, I don't know if it was the first one that came out or just the number one in the series, but this is a all-metal high-end gel pen. Uh, sort of like an executive pen, but it's kind of even past that into the luxury pen line, which doesn't try to maintain the styling uh, of an executive style pen. So it's like a gift type pen or a uh, luxury pen. All metal, uh, very beautifully made. This like clip is just like almost too strong. So you use this really beefy piece of steel there. Yeah, I mean, I know it look, it's a colored like, it's a bronze or a brass, but I'm pretty sure it's steel. Nicely machined front end here. It, it uh, the tip goes out by turning this really nicely made piece of, uh, I don't know what it is. I wanna guess it's anodized aluminum, but it has a little bit of heft to it, so it's hard to tell. Really smooth motion. You can see it is, uh, it slows itself down in the way some of the nicer uh, you know, jet streams do has some grease in there or, or you know, a spring or something. Just you can just see it go nice and slow. Really nice mechanics. 
It uses Sakura's uh, gel refill. Obviously, Sakura is the pen, the company that like is most closely associated with gel pens and, and largely invented them. This is the Sakura gel refill, the uh, L dash, sorry, R dash LGB05, so 0.5 millimeter. And you can see all that nice metal work in there and uh, very beautiful pen. The issue with these, and this might be brass, you hear that ring? So this is probably all brass if you're getting that ring from it. That's not gonna happen with a piece of aluminum or whatever, so. Really nicely made, not very long, but definitely has some nice heft to it and it's a beautiful pen. The issue with these, like I said, is that they're not super common and they're pretty expensive. The retail on this price, the retail on this one, I think is like 160 or 170. And since they're not that common outside of Japan, I don't even know how common they are in Japan, but since they're not that common, you don't see a lot of deals on them used. So I've been kind of uh, waiting on buying one of these for <laughs> probably a couple of years at this point. And I happened to see a great deal on it and I got it. Uh, I think it was new old stock type deal. Uh, maybe it was used once, but still in the original box, which is quite cool. I'm gonna do a full video on this one, but this is the uh, Secure Craft Lab 001. Very high end, very wonderfully made, gifty, gel pen and you could change that refill out with different refills but i do like the one that came with okay so let's just do some quick writing samples we have the uh stabilo palette nice gel pen i like this one a lot this is the uni ball I keep wanting to call this the Elite, but it's not the Elite, and it's not the Vision, it's the Deluxe. Old school, rollerball. It writes a lot like the Stabilo, but it's not as smooth, and it won't last as long. Let's see how this one goes. This is the Easy Flow 9000. Uh, I'm gonna roll the dice here, see if it writes well. But this is in a Ballograph Epaca. P, and this is the E flow 9K B. Just look, you can just see how broad and dark that line is. Really nice and smooth, but you can see the inconsistency that always happens with that Easy Flow 9000. These are pretty good. You can see it just starts doing that kind of railroading type thing. Just, man, if they could just figure that out, this would be one of the best refills sold. This was a pencil, <laughs> not much to see here, but this is the, gotta lock that out. Pentel AT, of course it's in the Arends line. Now we have the Precise V10 RT because it's retractable, 1.0 millimeter, and grip. Really smooth, a lot of ink going through these. You blow through these refills fairly quickly, but they're just so much fun as you're using them. The rolling writer we saw, this is a marker style sign pen. Not technically the Pentel sign pen, but very similar writer. And lastly, we have the Schneider. And this is the XB. Very broad ballpoint, very smooth, great writer. This, of course, is the slider memo, but that's the body. The XB in the Visco glide ballpoint is what you really want to get and the 755 x b is their parker style refill so 
there you have it, the pens and pencils that I've been using in March, 2023. Thanks for watching.